If you own a classic Mustang, you're no doubt familiar with Scott Drake and the high quality Mustang restoration parts they've been making for over the last 30 years. We're in town for the 2014 SEMA show and Scott hit us up and invited us to come out to their facility in Henderson, Nevada and see how they produce their products. So we're going to go inside and show you the extra detail that goes into a genuine Scott Drake product. We're in the lobby here at Drake Automotive Group with the man himself, Scott Drake. Scott, thanks for having us. Thanks, really Bill. appreciate this opportunity. I've been in this industry a long time. I have yet to meet somebody who's more driven about making sure the quality of his parts is what you're looking for. Scott, what are we going to see today when you take us through Drake Automotive Group? Well, thanks for your kind words, Bill. We're going to see wheel production, gas cap assembly and production, uh, mirror assembly and production, some cut and sew stuff, and probably a few other little secrets All the little back details there. that you put in your products that really make That's them right. kind of a step above. You Great. Betcha. Let's get started. We can't wait. Let's do it. I know this wasn't on the tour, but this is cool. You want to explain what this is here? Absolutely. This is a blast from the past, if you will, the old ways when we made tooling and how we made tooling. Prior to the days of CNC, all tooling was made based on a hydraulic panograph or basically a Bridgeport True Trace. We'd made a, made a pattern. In this case, it's a 65 gas cap. One side was a cutter, one side was a, a tracing stylus, and a panographer would cut back and forth and back and forth into the tooling and make the cavity and the core. So this represents cavity. That re represents the core for 67, both male and female coming together. Of course, those are different years. And they'd also start off when we wanted to capture detail, we'd always make it two and a half times the size. Okay. So that we drilled down into it, we'd get even more of a crisp. So that's the detail of your gas cap, just larger, so you can really get the exactly. fine detail out of it. Yep. And how long did you use stuff like this? I mean, obviously this is an old, old way of doing it. Absolutely. This is going back in the 80s and probably in the 2000s was the conversion to CNC to equipment. To a true CNC, which we're going to see as well today. A little bit. Not, okay. Not too much CNC, because most of that nowadays is done out of house. Okay. Well, great. Let's keep going. All right. All right. I promise I won't stop you every time we see something cool, but Scott Drake is full of cool stuff, including this wheel display. Or I guess how a wheel's made. You, tell us about this. What is this here? These steps or samples represent a hydraulic stamping operation of 15 steps to manufacture our 65 to 67. So every wheel you make goes through these stamping processes every to make one. the wheel. It starts out as a blank, then a deep draw, and they can only push the metal so far and then they, before it breaks out, right? Okay. So they push it a little bit and then they go to another step and do another little operation until it, it, you know, one end forms the pocket, another end forms another little detail, another mold forms another little detail, another form cuts out the windows until we're done at the very end. That is impressive. So we saw the 15 steps just to get it pressed. That's correct. Now let's see the rest of the process in building right. a Scott Drake styled steel right. wheel. So after the hydraulic pressing, we still need to get them up here, weld this donut in place, send them back out, have the lug holes put in place. Then they come in and we're about ready to do, to do a machine operation to it. Okay, let's okay. change that. In an effort, to make the most accurate wheel possible. We want to start with a almost perfect circle. There's no such thing as perfect, but we're going to try to make this almost a perfect circle. So prior to pressing this or having it chrome plated, we want that wheel to be a perfect circle. So we're going to take a surface cut on the perimeter of that, of that uh, insert. All right, so after the machine operation, this is the finish that we get, and we're ready to take it to the next step, which would be uh, either lug hole stamping and uh, chrome plating. All right, so it's machined and it's chromed. What's next? Next step is painting, which this is not the paint department, but for purposes of time, we're going to show you basically how we paint. So it's all chrome. We use a paint mask just like this. It's a two-part water-based epoxy paint. Uh, it sticks extremely well, and as a matter of fact, as a side story, we, when we make a mistake and we decide to strip the chrome off, okay. the chrome stripper hates this paint because you can't get the paint off. The chrome comes off easier than the paint. So the paint is available in two separate colors, the early argent and charcoal. So early wheels have argent, later wheels have charcoal. This one's a charcoal wheel. Later wheel, yep. Yep. So, okay. next so now it's painted, where do we go next? It's painted, now we're going to press it into a hoop. Okay.
So this is the aligning. Alright, so you got the meter on it. All right, so now to talk a little bit about the weld. We have spent a tremendous amount of money to dial in our welding equipment, use the proper gas, use the correct spacing to uh, create what I believe to be the best welds in the industry. I mean, it is error free, and plus we've had many of them tested and also periodically test just to it make sure. It barely that we're looks getting... welded. It's I know. so clean. Yeah. I mean, you have to actually double, you got to take a double take to see that there's a <laughs> weld there. A human cannot weld as good as that machine can weld, that's for sure. I know I can't. Yeah, it, I, either can I. I shake too much, but we're very proud of our welds. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you. Now that it's welded up, what's next? Well, we'll we will periodically uh, test one to see how it's aligned. Is it proper? Uh, does it meet the spec? And what is your spec compared to a competitor? Well, I can't tell you what a competitor is, but when we aligned it, we were plus or minus 10. Okay. And that is the acceptable tolerance The industry for your standard wheel. I've heard was 30, it could be up to 30,000. Okay. So the industry it's, will accept 30,000. Scott Drake will only accept 10. We're trying to get to plus or minus 10. Yes, sir. And if a wheel doesn't fall with that tolerance? If it doesn't fall within that tolerance, we're not going to ship put it in this box. All right, so after the balancing, the wheel's ready to go in a box and ship out to, hopefully, us. That's right, right to CJ's. <laughs> For... But I noticed in the back of the wheels, we did a video on one of your, uh, the 64 and a half wheel, actually. I noticed there's a lot of stampings on the back of your wheels. Tell us about those. There are, just to avoid confusion in the marketplace, because some people think they're buying a Scott Drake product, but they may not be. Look for the Scott Drake name stamped right into the back donut or backing plate. We have a date of production, and we serialize every single wheel from a uh, tracking purpose, and it's entered into a logbook at this side. Okay, and roughly on, a, on an average day, how many wheels do you finish and box up ready to ship? Well, I'm going to consider that proprietary, Okay. but uh, I Enough. can tell you a lot. A lot. Okay. You keep this man busy back here. We do. That's his full-time job and a few others. So that's the wheel. It's a beautiful piece. We're really proud of it. Get a matching Scott Drake center cap, and you're all ready to go. There you go. This is the Scott Drake 65 Rally Pack. Uh, we make them in 6 grand, 8 grand, 65, 66. We're just going to assemble a couple here today and show you some of the components that are made up in that. Excellent. Perfect. So Scott, all these individual pieces basically come in and you hand assemble all these before they go out and make sure that everything is right. Absolutely. Hand assemble, test. Uh, we have an experienced operator. He's putting in the proper rings, getting the, the, the right gauges but based on his production order assembling it and uh, he's going to test it to make sure it, it it works he's going to test the clock to make sure it keeps time and he's going to test the tack before so you they do go test out. every rally pack gets Everyone. tested by hand before 100%. it goes out absolutely so that's the difference right there instead of you know it's not made somewhere overseas where someone is doing it doesn't even know where the part's going somebody absolutely. understands what it is right. what it's supposed to do and make sure it does it before it leaves positively that's it's impressive. just part part of uh you know driven beyond perfection and taking it to the next level yep What's the next product you're going to show us here, Scott? Next product is actually a very early one, the C3RZ standard outside Mustang mirror. Something you've been making for probably 25 years, somewhere 20, 25 there? years. Yeah. And uh, there's a couple things that really give us, I think, an advantage over our competitors. One, it all starts with the castings. Some of the castings that you saw in the lunchroom hanging on the wall, mm -hmm. the secret is while that material is being injected into the cavity, it's not only being injected from one side under pressure, but it's vacuum assist. So it's sucking from one side, pushing in from the to other side. To create the tightest, best casting Yeah, it possible. feels that casting really fast. And, and that's really the beginning of a superior quality chrome product. Okay. One that you can just touch and feel. Something that much into, yeah, something just I mean, a piece of chrome like feel that. Feel your hand. There's no pit. There's no bump. I mean, it like feels like. Like you've said many times, it's more like jewelry than a It's more like part. jewelry. The next, the most important thing of this whole mirror is this. Okay. Something so simple. You know, with the old days of uh, your competitors, when you put the mirror on your car and the head flops in about two weeks and it yeah. goes flippy yep. floppy, yep. this part failed. Once this fails, 
you have to throw away the mirror because you can't take it out because it's pressed in. Okay. The uh, many of the Taiwan versions get this screwed up all because of Rockwell hardness. They're using the wrong material and they're heat treating it to the wrong Rockwell. And if you it's can't see be, out of it, the mirror is useless. It's useless. You throw it away. So you 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 may save a few bucks, but you're going to buy another mirror. I promise gotcha. you that. Gotcha. It's all because of this part. Okay. So what th th that machine's going to swedge? It's an orbital riveter. Okay. A little bit of grease. And that goes on top. It goes on top. Okay. How cool is that? And Scott, how long have you been making mirrors with a press like that? I'm sure at one point in time that was done by hand. 20 years plus. 20 years. Scott, I know the 65 gas cap is probably one of your more popular products and one that you're very proud of as well. Let's see how you put one of these together. Absolutely. Uh, we make a lot of gas caps. We make most of the gas caps from 65 to 73. And uh, we have some expert assemblers of which I'm not one. So I'm going to pass this on to uh, one of our pros. Okay, excellent. Okay, the first thing I do is check the chrome for quality and check the printing for proper coloring. It's good. Then I insert it in the nest. Then I check the condition of the lens. Make sure it's good. The color's in the right order. And then insert it and it is notched. Uh, next comes a gasket. Okay, and next is the back plate. And the way these holes are punched, you can only put them on one way. Pin it to hold it in place, lock it down, turn on the machine. These get riveted in three different places. Okay, so now I check the condition of the rivets. They're good. Make sure the lens didn't crack. It's good. Have a test filler tube. And everyone here. gets test fit on an original filler tube. Make yeah. sure it's right. Make sure it's going in the right direction and it fits nice and tight. Washer lock nuts. Okay, before he's allowed to make a gas cap, obviously we have to paint a lens. It starts off as a clear acrylic piece of plastic. And uh, there's some secret sauce in this, which I can't talk to you about, but we keep in mind that we're, we're doing some things that I'm not disclosing. But that being said, they use masks. Each one of these masks could be a thousand, could be two thousand dollars. When the molder me uh, molds these for us, it has to fit the mask. Temperature, heat, humidity, all changes that. If it's off by three thousandths of an inch and we decide to paint this, it's going to over or under spray what we're trying to do. So this mask, for example, is for our black, and I'll show you how that might work in a minute. So it starts off as clear acrylic, and then we might paint the red stripe, then we do the white stripe, then we'll do the blue stripe. Every one of those operations, red, white, and blue, requires a different mask. The last mask would be the black mask. So that's a four color operation. So the black mask, when it comes out of the, the paint booth, the paint room, it looks like this. We're painting it from this side. 
So you'll see some places on this lens do not have any paint at all. After this, we'll send this to a vacuum metalizer in Southern Cal. They will explode basically a grenade and positive and negative charges take place. And this chrome type of product sticks to the whole back side. We have to mask this side. The chrome will stick to this side and then it comes back and then we have to spray a protective coating on the back. And that's what gives it that three dimensional uh, back decorated lens, which we have to make here because products of the 60s were all done this way. If you buy a new card today, you might get a plastic injection molded emblem or a sticker. Yeah, nothing of that level. Nothing like this. This is a very, very difficult and very time, uh, timely process. So this gives you a little indication. I mean, we've used little airbrushes. In our paint room, we have some automated equipment that will help us through this process. All right, Scott, what are we making here? Well, we're in our soft trim department and we're gonna hammer out, make a uh, moonskin headliner. Okay. Okay, so this is one of the many so cut and sewn products that we do. We have a pattern. We cut the material uh, based on those patterns and she's sewing in the uh, loops for the headliner bows right now. So your entire headliner is hand sewn in-house? Yes, all of it right here. Wow. That is a lot of trunk mat material. It's a lot of trunk mat material. We make hundreds of rolls of the trunk mat. We stack them, we have a pattern, Moses cuts them out here with his vinyl cutter. And how many and that is, is he scrap. cutting in that stack? 25 at a time. It's basically like a jigsaw. I was going to say, that's what it looks like. Yeah, basically like a jigsaw. Wow, that is amazing. So you take the roll and just mark off where the mat gets cut out, and he cuts 25 deep. Exactly. And rolls them up. And this, this is the uh, vinyl trunk mat. Yeah. And we make the speckled one as well, and we make coops, we make fastbacks, we make them 64 or 73. The same all just like this. Well, here we are in R&D, the area that uh, I enjoy working in the most. And got to say, I'm thrilled to see R&D has a 2015 Mustang in it as well. It does. We couldn't wait to get this car. It just came in uh, three days ago, and the guys are going to start to tear it apart and start to play with taillight panels and scoops and build with aluminum and excellent very very cool new stuff coming out for this and this will be a whole with your drake muscle car line absolutely a whole selection of 550 parts that's correct and probably early next year we'll start seeing a whole bunch of stuff from well, you guys i would say so yeah okay yeah and what else happens back in r and d is the 15 the only thing you're working on right now do you have other cool projects going on back at any there? one time we have about 200 items in the can okay and they just wow. keep coming out you know uh more and more and more and uh, two of the R&D guys have stayed late tonight, and that's Tim and Chris. Okay. And they're going to show you some uh, cool things that they do and how we engineer and uh, manufacture or set up to manufacture the wonderful parts that we make. Great. Let's take a look. All right. Essentially, this uh, Romer arm allows me to take dimensions and get you know, locations of, of points and angles and circles and stuff off of a physical part. I can put it on the computer over here, and I can get my rough geometry and uh, faces and stuff. And uh, this is basically just a starting point for when we want to reproduce something. And from here, I'll take it over to my main computer on my, my actual desk and, and start building the part, you know, in, in SolidWorks. Basically using the information I got off of that last computer with the Romer arm, I take it in here and I kind of finish the drawing of it, I'll make it a little more real, finish up the pieces. I can actually do all the detail, do all the detail on it, you know, where I'm hiding the parts and we you know, insert everything from the springs to the pivot pins, you know, all the mechanisms it takes to make, make this part function, you know, whatever we're doing. After uh, Chris completes the math data from a SolidWorks program, he'll output it to the rapid prototyper and it actually creates plastic parts for us to use just to make sure it's right before we commit to making very expensive tooling. This is a great way to test anything uh, prior to committing to tooling just to make sure it's right. Because sometimes, you know, if you make a tool and something's wrong, you can't always repair it, or it can be tens of thousands of dollars to correct the mistake. So we want to fix that and catch it prior to start cutting tools. And that's really what a rapid prototyper is for for us. It's also used when we're making, let's say, a, a shift knob, and we want to see how it, and feel it, how it feels in your hand, does it feel right? Something we can put on the car and play with it 
before committing to uh, cutting real tooling. This is a new mirror that we're working on, which will be a uh, spun aluminum cone and aluminum base. And this is just an example of another lost wax casting that we can play with prior to committing to tooling. Uh, in this particular example, we actually even put glass in it and went over to a car and mounted it and uh, made sure that we could see out of the right-hand side, the left-hand side, there's interference with the vent window. Uh, it was a great little piece. So th this is also in, uh, in development. Little secret advanced notice stuff. The production Top seems uh, possible, probable. Uh, we already have had it quoted, and we've proceeded with the tooling. So it's in it's in it's in the works right now. Okay. And consider this a, a special announcement that just went to CJ's. Yeah, there you go. This is top secret. First stuff. time you heard it, you heard it right here. The first time. Hey Scott, thanks for the behind the scenes tour. I mean, I really enjoyed it. I'm sure our viewers are going to enjoy it. We really saw the differences that go into a Scott Drake product. I mean, you guys put a ton of heart, enthusiasm, everything in your products, and it really shows with the quality. I really appreciate the time today. Thank you very much. Hopefully we'll make it back again someday. Anything you got new for us, definitely let us know down the road. Absolutely. Uh, you're welcome back anytime. Appreciate all the CJ supports, and many thanks to all of your loyal customers out there. Uh, the quality that we provide does make a difference, and please ask for it by name. Thank you.